Okay, try to. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just <clears throat> got a tickle in my throat. All righty, so let's do it again. And today is uh, like day 62-ish, I think, of our uh, Corona confinement retreat, retreating from all the stuff that goes on out there in the world and any potential uh, danger from the coronavirus. And we just pray knowing that as we are here and we're doing our best to stay safe, I know some of you have to go out to work or whatever, and I can just remind you, wash your hands, wear your mask, do the best you can because we have the gift of life. And we want to make sure that we are using that gift um, wisely and showing our gratitude for it and showing our gratitude for everyone out there that also has to be out there and working or whatever so that we can have what we want. Like the guy who delivered my groceries yesterday. Bless his heart. I really got to hand it to them. They have a, a tough job and uh, I guess we are all having to do our part. Well, enough of that. Today we're talking about pangs of transition. Now, uh, first of all, let's go back to national the National Day calendar because there's a few things I noted from that that were uh, meaningful to me. And one of them is that it is National Cheese Souffle Day. Wow. And I realized that I went to culinary school for a number of years and I uh, have cooked probably since I was 14 years old and I have never made a cheese souffle. So I'm thinking maybe today will be the day, right? Why not? <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, but it's also National No Dirty Dishes Day. You know, that's a really big one, too, because I'm so happy about that time that I learned not to um, not to leave any dirty dishes in the sink when you go to bed at night. Because when you wake up in the morning, you're actually energized, as opposed to having your energy drained when first thing in the morning, you're looking at a sink full of dirty dishes. I've done that before, and it is not pleasant. So that's that's not an issue, except that I know... Even on a regular day, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll go like, How did, where did all those dishes come from? Now I'm trying to um, do the dishes as I use them, which is, you know, you think like, oh, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. How many times do we do that with life? I'll do it later, I'll do it later. But uh, putting it off is not the best thing. It is also National Visit with Your Relatives Day. And I think that's really super special because tonight I will be visiting with one of my sons and his wife through video chat. Thank God for technology. I'm very happy for that. It's been very lonely for me here, uh, living by myself. I'm blessed to love my home and I'm blessed to love the, the grounds that I live on. And normally those grounds that start be starting to get pretty busy with campers coming in and going out and telling stories and we're not allowed to open yet but we're praying that that day is going to come very soon we're waiting for the um, notification that we can open so I would like to really ask you to pray with us we want our own safety we want the safety of our campers and we want people to enjoy the peace and relaxation that they get at Grandview. Even though this year right now is going to be very different when they let us open. And we're hoping it's for Memorial Day weekend. But we didn't get the word yet. So please hold that in your prayers for me that we are soon uh, enjoying, uh, you know, receiving our campers again and even we may have a mask on but we'll be smiling behind that mask and we'll be doing the grand view greeting which is this live long and prosper isn't that a wonderful thing to wish everyone you see you don't know that that's a spock's uh vulcan greeting so uh but I think if it's good, it works everywhere. So I invite you to live long and prosper. And please know that for us in the campground. It's, 
it's definitely a time of challenge. And you know, um, today we're talking about the pangs of transition. We've, we've talked before about how this is a birthing process, that we are being birthed into a new kind of life, a new way of living. And um, anybody that's been through the birthing process knows that it ain't easy. <laughs> I remember uh, with my second uh, pregnancy, which was actually when my twins were born, I remember when you get that first serious you know, uh, contraction that you know, oh, this is it. There's no turning back now. And, um, and the first thought I had was, oh God, how did I let this happen to myself again? <laughs> and they do say that once the baby is born that you don't remember the pain. Mm, I, I could describe the pain. I don't know that I would feel it immediately. But, you know, life is like that. We go through birthing experiences. And uh, in case you didn't hear me say it before, um, the birthing process that we're in, that Barbara Marks Hubbard uh, talked about in her book, uh, uh, The Revelation, Our Crisis is a Birth, she said we're either going to have, we, we are in the process. Now, she wrote this in about 1993, that book came out. And um, she said, we have, we have begun a birthing process. So we've been in it for a while. And that it is either going to wind up being a Lamaze type birth, which is, you know, the easiest prepared birth possible. Or it's going to be like a breech birth, which is very painful. And the way it's looking to me, it's going to be a breech birth. And... So we're, we've got to know we're going to probably be, we already are experiencing pain. I mean, let's be, let's be honest about it. Now, if you have um, had the, the, the topic today is the pangs of transition. Transition is the point when you go from regular labor. Gosh, I remember the Braxton Hicks little, little contractions and you go, oh, Oh, I wonder if I'm in labor. Oh, heck no. <laughs> and then I don't think I ever had real labor pains until I actually got to the hospital. That's when you really kind of started to know, oh, this is, this is not going to be comfortable. And uh, it ain't going to get any better for a while. And, uh, but I think that's sometimes when, we're gonna, when we say we're going to have change in our lives, we think like, oh, well, that's a good idea. And then we start it and we find out it is not such a good idea. Well, we're in this birthing process, just like having a baby. We're in the birthing process. And we have to be prepared. You know, they don't call it labor and hard labor for nothing. They call it labor because it's, it's work. Now, a lot of times we get ready. We prepare uh, for childbirth if we go to like Lamaze classes. And um, we did that uh, when, when my granddaughter Sammy was born. Um, I went through the whole process with her mom. And we would go to the Ma's classes. And everything is always so like, oh, yes. And then you do this and then you do that. And then it really happens. And you go, oh, dear God, uh, this is not what I expected. But then that baby is born. Um, so I think we are coming into a transition period now that we, because, well, let me tell you for me, because this is how I started it, uh, how I spent my Corona confinement. And I'm sure you probably can relate. Um, yesterday I had one of those days. Sundays are a little tough for me. And I think it's because of all the years I did regular church. I did pulpit ministry and, you know, there was always a big hoo-ha about Sunday and, and, uh, so that's not there. The campers aren't here. Um, I'm by myself in my cottage and, uh, I dare not even hug my own sister who lives across the street because I wouldn't take a chance with her health and I, I know she wouldn't take a chance with mine. So I fell into, uh, sentimental victimhood. 
I wanted all the negative things that were in my life, especially for the past few years, I wanted them to go away. And I got very, very sentimental. And the more sentimental I got, the sadder I got. And the sadder I got, the lonelier I got. And you know, it was like I felt like I'd been carrying around a heavy weight for a long time. I am so grateful for the things that I do know to do during these periods. I know it's important to vent. I know it's important to cry. Um, and I know sometimes it's important to surrender to the moment and deal with it. Uh, and that's kind of what I did. Um, and then in the evening, I had a, believe it or not, three-hour visit on my portal with my great-grandson. And uh, three hours is an incredible long amount of time to spend with a five-year-old. <laughs> but um, we told our little stories and had our games and stuff. And, and it did soothe me, but still there was the pain that I can't get on a plane and go hug him. That I watch his his uh, his grandmother his his um, uh, oh God uh, the, his custodian his his custodial grandmother hug him and I oh I miss those hugs but we're in a birthing process to a new way of being and just like having a baby when this is over it's not going to go back to the way it was exactly it doesn't mean it's not going to be good. Every time someone I know has a baby, I tell them, well, you know, life as you once knew it no longer exists. But that doesn't mean it won't be great. And that's what we have to remember during this. Life as we knew it no longer exists, but that doesn't mean it can't be good. When we have those first labor pains, when a woman has her first labor pains when she's delivering the baby, uh, there's a couple of things that she has to know. And one thing, preparation is the best. So if the mother prepared for the labor, um, it would have been easier. None of us were prepared for this. We just weren't. We should have been. We should have been. Because it's only logical that we do things to take care of ourselves in case of a rainy day. In unity, we don't like to say you need to have a rainy day fund. We need to say, we like to say you need to have an opportunity fund. Just think if we all had opportunity funds, nobody would be in the stress. They'd be taking this as an extended vacation. The fact that we're under stress means we didn't prepare. You know, during the Depression, my grandparents lost two apartment buildings they owned. Two. And they made it through it, and they had a good life. Now, I know the Dep Depression started in 1929, and my uh, dad at that time would have been 12. So he was 12, and I think uh, my Aunt Bertha was like, two or three years older than him. So they had teenagers. They lost it all. My grandfather went in one day from being the owner, a, a landlord, an owner of two apartment buildings, to being the janitor of one. He also had to get a job, a, a regular job. Uh, my grandmother worked. She worked at Fafner Bering for many years. I don't know if she uh, did that before the depression or not, but, um, they went through hard times, folks, and they made it, and they're good people, they were good people, and had a good life, and, and they were happy, and, and had family, and, and raised them in a loving way, and so I know it feels like hell right now, but remember what we heard Governor Cuomo say, except he said it was quoting someone else, and I can't remember who it was. Roosevelt? Churchill. Churchill. If you're going through hell, keep going. Because we are going to come out of this on the other side, however long it takes. Now, one of the things about being in labor, 
in hard labor especially, is to rest between the contractions. So let's say yesterday I was having a contraction. Everything was coming in on me, you know, because that's what a contraction is. It's, it's a pushing from all sides in to get that baby out through the birth canal. But it was, it was all my memories, all my, all my sadness and my grief for the, for the losses I experienced and the way that life didn't turn out. So, you know, talk about that chain thinking. One thought led to another, led to another. Blech. And, uh, and one of the things I do when I'm like that is, um, when it's time to go to bed, I, I could not sleep. I had some melatonin and figured, well, that'll help. And I dozed off and woke up and well, here I am. So, um, I watched some silly TV, Big Bang Theory, and I was able to go to sleep. So these are things I'm telling you this, that you will remember it, but it's important to rest during the pains. So if the times you're okay, the times you feel you can handle it, do some resting, self care, enjoy yourself. Learn how to take care of yourself when one of those pangs start. Then, after a while, you're going to come to the part where you have to push. A lot of times, people feel it's time to push, women feel it's time to push too early. And that's dangerous for them and for the baby. So we have to know when to push and when to take those deep breaths. You know, that's what they always show on the TV shows. <gasps> we have to take those breaths to get us past the urge to push. What would the urge to push be? How about the urge to push our luck? Could that be a part of it? I don't want to push my luck. I want to go through it. And when it's time to push, I want to be ready. Okay, and I want you to be ready. And that's why I'm hoping that talking to you will help. You know, one of the things that we don't want to do in our culture today is we don't want to suffer. Well, nobody likes to suffer, but you know what? You got to go to the gym and work out and suffer a little bit if you want to be fit and, 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 uh, and, you know, in good shape, uh, we have to suffer uh, through staying in to be be healthy during this period of time we have to uh, and I think I think sometimes we have to suffer through the childbirth pains um, there's a lot and I'm very surprised by it because over time I've seen how many women are now having cesareans it's like it's it's like an option you know it's like, okay you're gonna have a cesarean or you're gonna have you know and I'm still working through you know um, induced labor without a good reason. I was induced. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if my whole horoscope was screwed up because I wasn't ready to be born yet. You know, I'm in there like, no, I'm not coming out. And the doctor had a picnic to go to on the 4th of July. So he said, yes, you are. And here I am. But there are certain things that are just a part of the way everything works naturally. And in this process, which seems very unnatural to us, I think we need to bear her with the pain, bear down. And when it's time to be ready to push, when it's over, we're going to need to do a lot of pushing to get our lives back in order in the way we want them and to create a new world the way we would like that world to be. And think of all the things you would say are wrong with the world. And uh, as for me, I put war right up there. We got to learn that war is never going to bring peace. You know, to me with like the cesareans, I think sometimes we think that we can do God better than God. I would like to invite you to think that God, Spirit, Mother Nature, all know a thing or two that we're not aware of. All a part of the natural world. You're probably too young to remember an old commercial for margarine. And uh, they would have Mother Nature and she would say, It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. Well, Mother Nature is getting a break from us. And hopefully we're taking note. 
of how much better it is when we work with nature instead of against it. Yesterday, in a way, I felt like I fell down because I worked so hard at staying up. And I work to hopefully encourage others to stay up as well. And when you're down, you don't do that real well. But this is what's important. You're probably going to fall. But when you fall, it doesn't matter so much how many times you fall, but how many times you get back up and try again. So I encourage you to do that today. If you're riding the roller coaster that I'm riding, your ups and downs, your highs and lows, just hang in there. Don't push until it's time and get ready. Rest between your, rest between your contractions. I invite you to take care of your mental health. Now, I also have a great way for you to uh, catch yourself. If you are having a moment of victimhood like I did yesterday, that sentimental, weepy, I want life to be back where it was, well, it's not. It's not. And it's not going there. And that doesn't mean it's not going to be great in the future. It's going to be great because we know how to make it great. We can make it great through metaphysics, the law of cause and effect, tuning in to the higher consciousness and getting ideas. So what is my idea? Put a rubber band around your wrist. And if you catch yourself being being weepy and, and self-pitying, self-pity is, we are meant to be powerful, not pitiful. So if you're feeling pitiful, and, and take this little rubber band and go bang, and just snap your wrist. And you go, oh, yes. <laughs> that snapped me out of it. All right. Going to let you go to your day. Please remember, if you feel depressed, if you feel really down, please remember the importance of taking care of yourself. Find someone to talk to. A professional, a clergy person, a friend, tell them you just need to dump on them and you, they, you're not expecting them to fix your life. Ah, so go to your day, make a souffle. I don't know, it could happen. Thank you for being with me today. And I know that I behold the divinity in you. God bless.